Hey guys, Woman02. Sorry for the lack of an intro video, but we're going to be jumping right into a CSM round. And we are playing with Grixis Delve today, which is a pretty cool deck. Um, God. I'm about to turn that thing off. Um, this guy looks fine. I'm probably playing against White Weedy. I think I'll be playing a lot of White Weedy today. Well, what do we think, though? Eh, I think it's okay. He's got the play. I'm going to keep. And say go. Alright, this is going to get turned off. Can't do Discord while I am playing this. Too many notifications. Alright, so turn one signal pest. I think I want to hit land drops here, so I'm going to play this out and say go. Actually, I should have played the fetch, but kind of jumping between a few things. So if we get wastelanded, we get wastelanded. Probably a 2 2 first striker. Yep. Alright. We'll get hit for a zero here. Well, that's actually a very strong pickup. I'm going to fetch an Underground Sea here, and likely Mystical Tutor. Hope to hit a land very much, so. But we can Mystical Tutor for a kill spell, or something along those lines if we hit a land on his next end step. And we'll see what he gets up to here. Alright, more mana. Okay, Hall of Triumph. Well, we have a braid in the deck to deal with that if we really need to. But a minimum, Elite Inquisitor is not um, Precinct Captain, which is a much bigger problem. Yeah, I'm not blocking here. Alright, land, come on. Come on, deck. Thank you, deck. The question becomes now, like Arc Trail, maybe, what I try to find here? I think the play is to do this. Do this, and then we're going to use the Mystical Tutor. Either to find, We could find Treasure Cruise, too, but like I don't think I need to leave up counter spells yet. This will force him to get rid of his Signal Pest here. Okay, go ahead. We could even block this if we want to, but it may make sense to just keep the Elemental Tokens around. Um, unfortunately, Mystical Tutor gets a lot better after we have sideboarded, because we can bring in a lot of Hoser cards for uh, the White Weenie decks. These are very common. Okie doke. I think that is fine. Alright. Do I block here? Just conserve my life total? I probably do. Mm, no, I'm going to take. Okay. Maybe I just find a braid here. Yeah, a braid actually doesn't seem half bad. So go for a tap. No, I can't go for a tap land here. So just get an island, maybe. Sunken Hollow doesn't work. And I really don't want to take damage. So probably just island. We'll mystical tutor here, and we'll look at our options. There may be something better for us on three lands. I haven't played this deck in a while. Grixis is an interesting deck because um, I think it's one of the more challenging decks uh, in this format because it tends to win incrementally, not unfairly. I have Dismember, which is mm, interesting. Oh, but Colgan's Command. Colgan's Command is actually probably our best option. Does he have fast effects to this? Yeah. Getting a two for one this way. Because, I mean, the self of spear can make all of his stuff indestructible. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's all indestructible, so I can't attack. But it also limits your attacks. Okay. And the two two can get in there. Now, if I draw a land, I have Cryptic Command available, which becomes a lot more powerful. I'll let the two two get in. Alright, are we out of gas at this point? 
Okay, we'll go to my opponent's turn. I'll probably take another two off of the uh, Elite Inquisitor. I just wanted to trade this many Elemental Tokens, um, and I want to leave Counter Magic up throughout their turn, and then End Step and Is It Charm. Or if they happen to do something like during their main that I really need to get, um, I can undermine it. Another f possibly fruitful option is to use Vendillion Click on their End Step to start getting damage in, but I think I want to control in this matchup. I don't think I think my deck is more well suited to controlling in this matchup. Um, and once we can, you know, get enough dominance of the board, we can establish uh, inevitability. So we'll see what we want to do here. If they cast a bomb like an Elizabeth or a big planeswalker, I'll probably just counter it. Okay, just get this thing. Could have Restoration Angel. That would be bad for us. Ah, okay. Could have a counter spell for this. There are some counter spells he runs, like um, rebuff the wicked and stuff like that. Okay, healing grace. Okay. Well, it has been prevented. Hmm. Well, T Dell is kind of a little bit risky in this situation, so I'm just going to say go. We're at a point now where we can quad block the elite inquisitor and likely kill it and counter any like buff he may have to to get it past our stuff. I think I'm fine taking, you know, two off of Savannah Lions. This will get two of my things, but I mean, my things were basically free for just casting my spells. Yeah, like I was saying, Colgan, or I'm sorry, Mystical Tutor is kind of more fair in this deck, and this deck in general is just more fair. More one-for-one -one exchanges. Well, I assume at this point he has to cast something, so if he does not, I'm just going to play out of Endillion Click. Alright, so Tari, a champion. No thank you. Don't want an unblockable. Get two of these in there. And we've got a reman and a miscalc. Um I kind of want to hit land at this point. Miscalc is kind of losing it's becoming more marginal. I really want to get this crypto command, um, get access to it. Five point life swing over the course of the last turn cycle, though, so it's not too terrible. All right, Elite Vanguard, I think, is fine. If he attacks the Lions, I will easily trade it. Cycle this off. I could just get a Vendillion click down next turn. I would really like to hit my lands, though. Now I may, if my opponent does nothing else. I'll get in with two of these things. If he wants to block, cool. I don't mind taking a hit from one of these two. Obviously, an untapped land would have been much better there, but what can you do? All right, Athalia's a lieutenant. So this is the only human on board. Get this thing. Okay, Thalia's Lieutenant comes down, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Dismiss, not a horrendous pickup. I think we just get in there with two of them. Keep on chipping away. And now anytime he casts a spell, I'm essentially getting value. And I have the Cryptic Command up, which could even, you know, uh, bounce draw if I have to. He does nothing over the course of his turn. Basically, I have two Crypt Commands, because Dismiss is essentially like an alternate copy of it. Nothing. I'm just going to return this and draw a card, then. If we're going to do nothing. Can't think of a lot of instant speed ways he could punish me. He could kill my Pyromancer, but I already have decent onboard advantage. And that's going to be a cincher right there, I think. 
take four. I think I'm going to allow that to resolve. I don't want anything like silly to resolve. All right, dismiss, get deeper. TC is one of the better draws we could have there. Well, let's get rid of the lands because they are kind of irrelevant to us. Um, is it charm? I don't mind. Yeah, I'll get rid of Is it charm though. Um, we'll get rid of dismiss. And Diabolic Edict seems bad in this matchup. Uh, Mystical Tutor is not really going to do more for much for us. Neither is Miskelk. Leave some hard counters and some kill spells in there. Let's see what we can find. I'll fetch here. For the lulls, I suppose. Should probably just find an island, yeah. Um. Yeah, why not? I'm going to bottom that, top this. And then we're swinging it with everything. Well, except for the Pyromancer. And this is what this deck wants to do, is kind of get control of the game, you know, after it's lost about half its life total or so against the aggro decks, uh, more so with point removal, but we do have you know, utility cards like Toxic Deluge that are very good against them, which was situationally pretty bad against us here, uh, because we had the Pyromancer draw. Okay, so this is a pretty easy side or match to sideboard for. We have a ton of hate for it. So we have Anarchy, Whip Flare, Pyroclasm, Forked Bolt, Mass or Massacre, Virtuous Ruin, Dark Blast. Generally speaking, we take out cards like Mystic Confluence. It's a good draw card, but it's just kind of slow. Dismiss is very slow. Um, Tito, I think this deck still tends to want. Dismember, um, I think, can generally come out in this matchup. It's a lot of life loss to accrue. Uh, Rise Fall is kind of marginal in this matchup as well. He's going to have a more, uh, he's going to have a less land-rich deck. But I think in general, you, um, I think in general, um, it's it's just not going to be high enough upside. Uh, whereas I think a card like um, Hymnaturic is good enough. Direfully Daredevil, I think, is good in this matchup, actually, so the first strike, which makes it pretty relevant. Complicate is interesting. I think I leave Complicate in. Cryptic, maybe not. Force of Will seems actually kind of bad, uh, unless he Geddens me. Like, Geddon is, like, the, the worry, worrisome card. Um, a Duress... Hmm. Dress is on the verge. A lot of their cards do the same thing. Um, Thoughtseize, a lot of damage. Uh, Dark Confidant can come out, too. We don't... We're not really... That's more for the control mirrors, because, like, this deck will struggle in, like, hard control mirrors. A lot of the hard control decks will have less dead cards than you will, because you have so much creature kill, like, point removal, which allows this deck to interact, obviously, better along a curve with the aggro decks. So you don't just die before you can get to Wrath of God. But... Um, it does mean that it costs you a lot more card slots to do that, uh, because you need to have more mass of those kind of cards to deal with um, the aggressive deck, so you can go along her. I also have Nickel Bullis, a Plains, or whatever this guy is, Nickel Bullis, the Ravager, or something like that, in my sideboard. New card. I'm trying out. I'm not going to bring it in this matchup. I think it's just a little bit too slow. I could be wrong. I mean, I could want it more than, like, I mean, this deck may be overboarded, to be honest, because the meta is, like, heavily white weenie right now. Like, I could jump into the registration and tell you, yeah, it's like all, all white weenie and then Jack Schlegel and myself. I don't know what Jack's on. We'll see. He's on blue-white moat, which is actually going to be a tougher matchup for us. Um, and maybe the Nickel Bolas will come in. We shall see. Um, we do have a few interesting tools. We have Pyro Blast, Red Elemental Blast. Can obviously leave in the discard. I mean, I'm taking out more of my my less efficient cards. I think Cryptic Command can do enough more than Dismiss that it's worth keeping in. And Dismiss just being a four mana counter, sometimes just not going to do it. Like you really need a you know more than a two for one card. You need a card like Anarchy or Massacre just to say no. Your your whole board gets flipped upside down. Um, obviously double colors, multiple double colors in the in the four spot is a little risky. This is primarily a blue deck. Um. Double red is the most disconcerting. The Massacre is, is easy to cast. I will generally have Swamps in this deck, and my opponent is certainly going to have Planes. Probably more often than I will have Swamps. So, 
what I think of this deck? I think this deck like struggles in a wider meta uh, because the way it wins, like I said, is fundamentally fair. It just plays really cheap spells, has really cheap delve threats, and then um, you know wins through beatdown essentially. Well, this hand looks fairly similar, but it can't really cast enough. If it had like two more lands, it would be keepable. But I think this is a pretty easy mulligan. All right, I like this hand a lot better. This is a keeper. Um, I'm gonna bottom that. And the reason being, I think that my Mystical Tutor is going to um, turn into probably a Sweeper of some sort. It could even turn into an Anarchy. Could just let my opponent go nuts and then, like, blow them up. Oh, I want to play this out tapped. Yeah, I may just Anarchy them out. It just depends on how fast they can develop their board and kind of beat me down. Okay, Boon Splitter. So they're going to do four to me. Okay. That's a lot of damage, but what can you do? Oh, Colgan's Command deals well with that. Question is, do I take four again, or do I save the Isn't Charm for something else? I think I'm comfortable just Isn't Charming here. I mean, we could just Mystical Tutor for a draw spell as well. We don't necessarily need to try to, like, get greedy and wait for the blowout and then just get randomly mized out by something, so I'm just going to blow this dude up. Just preserve my life total. Um, buy time. I'm going to get more draw steps out of this. You know, I don't necessarily need to go to for a Mystical Tutor Anarchy here. I do think it's very powerful. Alright, swords. Cool. Well then. I am going to put the Pyromancer down. That's a very solid draw. Um, unfortunately, I kind of didn't do that right. I should have played the Marsh Flats out, because I don't really want to get a bad lance with that. Um, and I'm going to leave up the uh, Mystical Tutor to find whatever I may need. And it, like I said, it may just be draw. Um, we do need to Coligan's Command the sword here, if it gets equipped or something. Alright, it looks like it is going to get equipped. Okay. Well, that was actually a very, very strong pickup. I did not Mystical Tutor there, I kind of wanted to bide my time. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just do this, and obviously Fatal Push can obviously scale up a lot better, but I'm just going to go ahead and deal with this thing right now, and say no thank you, sir. And get in for my two damage, and leave up Electrolyzed Coligan's Command and Mystical Tutor uh, for anything I may need, and I feel like this hand's pretty well in hand, or this game is pretty well in hand right now. We just managed to have the Young Pyromancer both times, which gave us both a relevant threat and a lot of answers to their threats. One of the issues this deck will run into is because it's a 12-creature deck, um, is that it can, it's very threat light, and sometimes it's very easy to control in the early game, but it's tough to transition. Uh, um, hmm. I'm going to burn my opponent a little bit. Just to get deeper in the deck. I can Mystical Tutor later after they develop more cards on the board, and I don't have Coligan's Command up right now. I wouldn't mind minded making them discard, but we'll just get one deeper. Alright, Whip Flare. Whip Flare is pretty good against my own card <laughs> right now. But like I said, you don't always have the threats like we do right now, so it can sometimes be problematic. Probably put a bone splitter on it or play another creature. Oh, that's actually very good for us. Um, well, actually, it doesn't quite work for us, does it? So what we're going to have to do is kill that and blow up the Sword of uh, Fire and Ice. Because it'll make this dude indestructible. So what we'll do is this. We'll go red, black, whatever. Uh, we'll blow this up and blow this up.
Dark Blast is interesting as well. Um, it could just be we want to get a draw spell, like uh, Dig Through Time could be very good here. Treasure Cruise could be fine. I'm not really sure. I mean, like, Anarchy is kind of like the blowout play, but, like, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I have a lot of ways to kill that thing. Hmm. Maybe I just go for Dig. It's kind of risky, but... I think I'm going to dig. Yeah, I think I want to dig. I have seven cards in here. Fatal Push is one I probably want to leave. Sadly enough, um, because it can deal with the current board situation... All right, so this is not the best of pickups. Um, we can use a Complicate and possibly Tomb Stalker as a threat to win the game. Okay, not the best pull there. Maybe we should have gone for Anarchy, but... I feel like getting a two for one and getting up on cards is going to be kind of important. I, mean, I guess I would have gotten a two for one off the uh, the anarchy as well. Maybe I was just being greedy, but it's not a good transition to go into anarchy and then like just have whip flare in hand because whip flare. I mean, well, it will make a token, does not really you know do much that same turn. All right, get in there for four. All right, so this is a three-turn clock, pretty quick. Okay. We do need to fill our graveyard up rapidly here. All right, Pyroclasm, one of the worst draws. So we do have just enough to, to play this big fellow out. And I wouldn't be shocked if my opponent has removal right now. Um, Clasm plus Whip Flare, drawing both of them is not good. Put him down to 10. My guess is they do have removal in hand. So now Snapcaster is a lot less good at this point. Other than just being a clock. Well, Lightning Bolt's game, any 3 damage burn spells game, I don't run a ton of 3 damage burn spells. And mostly they're in here as removal, but we shall see. I mean, we could just be dead, like I said. I mean, if he has, like, Council's Judgment or another O-Ring effect, he can just deal. Alright, he's got that thing. Could bounce the O-Ring. I don't think that makes sense, though. I mean, if he gives me that back that thing, I'll, I think, be okay. Just bounce his land. Do you have another card to play? You very well may. Okay. Well, big draw here. Not what we want to see. Game is uh, not likely to go that much longer. So I get take six in the air next turn. So I technically can't attack. Um, that's pretty miserable. So I guess we have to pass it. And hope that we can mize next turn for a way to kill the Sotari Priest. Yeah, going for Anarchy probably was a better call. Um, I thought Seagate cards would be a better. Alright, well, that doesn't really make a functional difference in the clock. Okay. Down to one. And we find a kill spell for this thing. In a way, we do... Actually, that's really good. So, what we do is this. We just go for the Destroy All White Creatures card. Which is... I forget the name of the... It's... Um, where are you at? Virtue's Ruin. Right here. Play Virtue's Ruin out. Blow everything up. And put him on a one-turn clock. And hope he can't do one damage to us somehow. 
And if he can play out blockers, it shouldn't be real. He needs to play out, play out a flying blocker. I can whip flare twice. Or I can whip flare plus pyroclasm once. Okay, blocker. Yep. So I just double clasm here, I guess. Double clasm was very awkward. That uh, demonic tutor was obviously a lifesaver. I mean, we were losing the next turn. Oh, and there's just a lightning bolt. Okay, well, we can end the farce then. Yep, and we will. Game. All right, well, pretty quick uh, 2-0 start. Very small tournament today. Quick pause, guys, while I go ahead and uh, update uh, our, our, um, our records here, and then I'm going to jump back in and we'll watch some other games. All right, guys, we're back. Empty Joe's slowly loading this round. Um, I do not know what the uh, match record is right now. I do know it's decently uncommon for uh, a white weenie versus control to go faster than two white weenie matchups. Generally, this this matchup's kind of... Uh, well, it's about a couple things. It's about first strike, and it's about flying, evasion, and first strike, basically. And equipment, generally speaking, are kind of the power plays. Oftentimes, the creatures just bounce off each other unless they can evade. And right now, Golden Lin is at 9, but he's obviously a little more strapped um, as it goes on, on uh, threats on board. I mean, he does have a Thalia, which is pretty strong, but the Guardian of whatever this is, this Popper card, old Popper card, Guardian of the Guild Pack, an old uh, Ravnica card, it's actually quite good against him, and his fetch land actually does denote that it could possibly he could possibly die a turn faster. Both players obviously have a sizable amount of clues. Um, this matchup, you really don't want to draw a ton of lands. Dust Bowl is not a champion in this matchup. I did. That's cool. All right, so, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I don't know, it's tough, because, like, you're really not winning by not getting in there, but you're uh, you're, you're in a tough spot here. He did get to draw a bunch of cards with his clues, though. <clears throat> Guardian of the Guild Pack is going to be difficult to deal with, though. They're both looking for removal off their draw steps here. Possibly cheap threats, but right now removal is going to be relevant. Um, but like I said, I think Guardian is going to be very tough to deal with. It's actually a pretty cool uh, sideboard choice or main deck choice for a white weenie deck or right now because there's so many white de weenie decks like I was telling you about. Uh, it is very expensive at four mana, but, you know... Well, get the ML treatment. Alright, still Moon Cavalier is actually a problem because it does block the Guardian, um, the Guardians. Now the Flyer is going to be what he needs to kind of get through on, and now Goldlin actually has a threat that can block the uh, Guardians as well as get through pretty much anything that Bandit Keith can put down. So like we were talking about, like, protection is another form of evasion, um... This thing even has flying, first strike, can get pumped. It's pretty good in the mirror. When I say pretty good, I mean awfully good. All right, Starry Monk, that's another evader. Uh, there are actually, this is one of the matchups in this game, in this hundred, in the hundred card uh, game, um, in the meta where Shadow can actually sometimes be relevant because there are so many mirror matches often played by White Weenie that um, the Shadow cards will bounce off each other, so it's not an automatically. It doesn't say unblockable on it. Um, it's not a Phantom Warrior for uh, for two mana. <laughs> And as you saw, we kind of had our own troubles dealing with uh, Satari Monk's uh, brother, Satari Priest, in the in the pro-red department. Um, it definitely allowing uh, ML to get through for a significant amount of damage. Oops. 
Where did Hunter Car go? Oops. There we go. All right, so what is happening here? Well, it looks like Goldenman was able to mise pretty well off the clue tokens. Aero Responder is something that will allow him to stay alive, though. Because now, I guess, well, actually, this thing does fly. So this thing can fly, which is going to be problematic. Um, but if he turns it sideways to start getting damage in, then uh, Bandit Keith can double attack with the Bygone Bishop and the Aero Responder. And as of right now, with no equipment... Um, or the possibility of combat tricks, um, it would be able to force through two damage and have a life swing of two damage as well, or two points in uh, Bandit Key's favor. Well, he's taking four a turn, ostensibly. Hmm. Pardon me for drinking, folks. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that is raceable, especially when his opponent's on six life. And if the Still Moon Cavalier does turn sideways, then the Guardian represents an additional two damage. So I guess it's four plus two, so it's a swing of uh, six life versus four life, uh, which is going to favor Bandit Keith, I think, if he plays his cards right, so to speak. Crack at a clue. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, Pygon Bishop is uh has definitely made this game interesting. Both players are far deeper in their decks than they typically would be. I know Golden Lens tends to run a lot more lands than Bandit Keith does, uh, which I think in this sort of uh, situation can tend to favor him. Uh, just due to the fact that he can do more with his turn while cracking clues, because clues are inherent uh, tempo loss um, to provide card advantage to a pilot. But I don't think I don't think Bandit's in a bad situation though. I think if he just if the Still Moon basically has to stay back, if he starts drilling in with his Still Moon plus the Soltari Monk, I think the backswing is too much. All right, that's going to change the math a lot. That's a huge game changer if it goes on the Still Moon Cavalier, which I think undoubtedly it should. Um, and it's going to change the game quite significantly. These games tend to come down to, like I said, equipments, first strike, and evasion. Um, in this case, we've kind of bypassed the first. The first strike portion of my, my argument is that that's most relevant in the early game, like turns two to three. Flying becomes relevant turns four through five, and then like as you get deeper in the deck, the equipment tends to push one player um, to victory over the other if you're able to find it with uh, you know cards like Stoneforge, Mystic, uh, Steel Shaper's Gift, even Relic Seeker sometimes. More of a draft card, but... Certainly not horrendous. Um, Stone Hero Giant, not commonly played. I've played it in this format when most of those other cards I was mentioning were banned. Um, I think it was very playable. That's an interesting equip, because I think if his opponent has one mana removal there, he exposes himself to a pretty significant tempo loss. He's going to play passively here. This is interesting to me, because I, I think you want to start... If you're on Goldland's side and you get that draw, you want to start at least turning something sideways to uh, to force the action. I mean, he's not at a high life total, but the one way that he can lose this is if he doesn't capitalize on um, on tempo gains through the, the greater card volume he's drawn. And his opponent's just able to kind of, you know, nug him out. That's bait for the Sword of Fire and Ice activation uh, upon hit. Oh, Fragmentize. Okay, that's a big one right there. Because uh, that sword was kind of what was holding together the plan. And now he can do the double attack with the two flyers one of which has Vigilance, and unless, you know, Goldenlid has some weird pump or trick in his hands, like, it should come through. The Guardian should... Actually, correction, no, no, no. So the Still Moon Cavalier is still back, so he should not attack with both, because this thing can fly, and it could be pumped into range. Yeah, this is... Yeah, that's right. He's, he's forgetting about Still Moon Cavalier, because it will fly. It does have First Strike. It does pump. Now, Goldenlin may miss it as well. Uh, my guess is he probably won't. He plays this deck almost every week. Um... He makes some changes to it, I suppose. Um, all right, but this is going to become a three toughness or three power um, protection from white and black flyer, which is a pretty big error on his part. 
on Bandit's part. Um, after fragging the sword, I think you just have to stick, stay back and just, you know, try to continue, you know, drawing into your, your relevant and important cards in the matchup. And it looks like he has something else. He's just going to pump it to a 3-1, would be my guess. Could do that after acquiring the block, I think, but... We were talking about, though, Goldlin does need to make the transition. I don't think it's correct uh, to make the supposition that you're, you'll be able to make the transition easier based on your opponent's misplays, which is what's happening here. Um, this is a misplay by Bandit Keith, although I was falsely announcing. I think I announced that the silver, uh, the Still Moon Cavalier could uh, fly, and then I <laughs> accidentally redacted that. All right, well, he doesn't block. That's interesting to me. I wonder why he opted not to kill one of those two threats. I suppose one... Um, one argument is, is that he wanted to pop the clue, but even then, it's a free block. Um, you don't kill it, maybe, if you want to pop a clue, but it's a free block, so I think you still go for it. Interesting. Another interesting sideboard card. All right, that's, that's actually big, too. It's going to make his stuff huge, which means it can pretty much trade effectively with everything in combat. I mean, it looks like he has something else relevant. Or he's just going to pop a clue and see if he can do anything else with his mana. Um, yeah, I tend to like the bigger... Not the bigger mana, but like the more mana-rich uh, versions of uh, White Weenie or Death and Taxes. I generally tend to run 33 to 34 in mine. I've run as high as 36 in a Death and Taxes uh, deck that was very very much so uh, dependent on his lands to do a lot of different things. Um had stuff, you know, like, obviously Tech Edge, Dust Bowl, the Flagstones, had the Attack Lands, um, you know, Mistress Factory, Immuta Vault. Um, obviously had Fetch Lands as well, so it could thin down. You know, had, and also had, like, Weather Wayfarer, Land Tax, Mox Diamond. Um, so it, it was, in general, utilizing those cards to kind of accrue some incremental advantage, which I think tends to benefit you in the mirror. A lot of folks, I think, would unintuitively think that like just the more threat-rich deck is going to win. And it really comes down to quality of threats because you're essentially doing a lot of creature combat. Um, and at this point, uh, Bandit should note that you know his opponent does have superior creatures unless they're turned sideways, despite um, probably a superior um, position and tempo. All right, well, he has his own, uh, own I guess, um, Anthem effect to essentially kind of nullify the honor of the peer. The only difference, you know, oh, he's just going to attack with all? Well, what happens here? This can't block. Let me think here. So the Bygone Bishop can't block. The Still Moon's going to block something. Uh, does this win him the game? He can block with only four of his creatures? Oh, he's dead. Unless he has a kill spell, he's dead. Okay, he's just dead then, because he's going to pump this, and he's going to kill, you know, kill or trade with four things, but any two of these things are actually lethal on their own. They actually would have been anyway, so actually his attack was uh, was kind of hasty there, and, and I don't see why it would have been forced, but, you know, probably just a, a misplay, unfortunately. And none of the Anthem effects that either player has are tied to creatures, so first strike should not come into uh, relevance here. Sometimes those kind of errors can happen because, like, Thalia will block, like, you know, a card like, let's say, Banalish Marshal, and the card will die before combat is actually, the rest of combat, outside of first strike damage, is resolved, and um, it'll tend to, to mean a win. So, don't think that had to be a game loss there. I think he would still be at zero right now if he'd made the one block, and then, uh, I guess he had to attack there. Interesting draw, though. Obviously, he hit just too many lands, and that's something that can happen. You can flood. Um, the uh, the spirit should uh, should prevent that. But guys, we're going to a quick pause until the uh, the round results are up for round one from uh, that matchup. I don't know if it was a 2-1 or 2-0 uh, match, and uh, we'll get back to playing. All right, guys, Loman 0-2. This is going to be an interesting matchup because I believe my opponent's playing blue-white, uh, which is a pretty hard control deck. Which I think this deck will tend to struggle with because it has dead cards, kind of like Fatal Push, which I don't think are very good, excepting a few cards like their man lands. Um, I'm going to keep this hand, though. It has a Snapcaster Mage to kind of pressure them, which is not irrelevant because I do see myself as the beatdown in this uh, matchup. Just going to play this out tapped and say go. Kind of telling of my hand, I suppose it does tell that I don't do not have uh, like a double blue counter spell. Okay, wins with teeth. Okay, preordain or ponder likely. All right, just sleight of hand, cool. But yeah, I do think this is going to be a little tougher for us, though. I 
Okay, well, we are going to leave up Snare. There is a good chance that maybe on end step we just go for a Snapcaster just to start threatening our opponent. Because their long game is going to be a lot better than my own, I think. Hopefully they play like a search for his content. We can just snap it off with Spell Snare, though. I do think this is correct. You just jam it. If they want to counter it on end step, that means that you can resolve possibly a three-mana Planeswalker. I think he. I think. I think it's actually incorrect for him to counter it, but he may. Okay, manage rain. Oh, that's a good one. That's actually that was probably worth it for him. All right. Well, for lucky, he has like a Jace the Mind Sculptor or something, and no additional land drop, and we can complicate it. We'll probably be able to complicate whatever he does with his mana drain mana. That was a good pick up there. Yep, two mana. Okay, a Ghost Quarter. I'll play a 5-drop. That would be awesome for us. That's actually fine. I don't really care if that happens. So there's been a one spell cast this turn. Well, no thank you to this. It's actually great. We get to get rid of a card that I figured was dead in this matchup. He could try countering this. It's fine. I'll probably just spell snare whatever he plays. It can't be pierced. Have to be like a mana leak or something like that. I'm going to burn through my cards just so I can... Uh, Oh shit, that's actually, that's a good reason why not to do that. That is a good reason not to do that. So what does this do? Whenever an opponent casts your first spell, they counter that spell. That sucks. And that does nothing. So we need to find a threat in some way to cycle into it. Probably just cycle the complicate. And say go. Well, none of this is very good, huh? I suppose Temple of Epiphany and possibly Burst Lightning? I don't know. None of that seems good, though. I need threats at this point, and I need other spells I can cast. So Burst Lightning makes the most sense there. Um, because we do need to get into um, a threat. And Burst Lightning is the first card we can pitch after making our play error in the beginning of countering that spell. But if they land a Planeswalker, all right, Elsbeth, well, that card is at least at a minimum. It's not exceedingly great. All right, well, we really need a threat here. Oh, I think we just cycle this. So we're probably not going to be able to counter spells here. All right, we'll do this. See what we find. Put it on the bottom. We'll see another draw step, and then we'll probably concede. We F that up pretty bad. The drain was pretty rough in the first place. 
um, to allow them to get ahead on mana really fast, but um, we kind of screwed up pretty bad there. Our visions are beyond. They're running a lot of bad cards. Like, I don't think Aereo is, is, is any good at all in this meta. Like, I think it's horrible versus White Winnie. Um, but, you know, and they're running kind of bad cantrips. Yep. You got it. We'll see our next draw and then see if we can resolve something. I think we can probably get them, though, in sideboard of matches. Like I said, I think we have too many dead cards and we're a little threat light, so we're going to bring in, like, the Nickel Bolas and, like, some of the uh, the good, like, good counter spells against their stuff, like the uh, Red Elemental Blast and the Pyro Blast, and remove some of the uh, removal. Alright, what else you got? If it's another Planeswalker, we're probably just dead. Okay, I think we go ahead and just pack it in here. That's up too many cards. We're probably not going to get him from there. The Aereo is a big problem. So, we bring in Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, um, Nickel Bolas. Um, we don't probably need any of these. Um, what do we want to cut? Fatal Push seems kind of bad. I guess Terminate's probably... Eh. Arc Trail seems bad. That doesn't seem very good here. Dismember is meh. Um, probably want to cut it. Like I said, I think removal tends to be kind of bad in this matchup. Maybe we do cut the Fatal Push and just leave in, like, the burn, the burn plan, and go this way. Um, we do have an additional threat in our deck at this point in the form of Nicol Bolas. We have some decent counters, so... Just remember it could stay in. I mean, it's very cheap. Do you think Dire Fleet's going to be good in this matchup? Alrighty, yes, I would love to play first. This hand is keepable. It doesn't have a threat, which is what it really wants, but I think it is a keepable hand. I think you have a tough time put pitching this back. Um, I'm just going to play Flooded Strand and say go. Probably Force Spike just about anything here, just to slow my opponent down. Okay. Not going to fetch here, just in case we hit a brainstorm or something like that. Okay, I think we just lead on an island here. The Flooded Strand is likely going to fetch a uh, blue red land of some sort. And yeah, I'm fine playing, I think, draw go for a bit. I do think they have better late game, but like I said, I do need to hit a threat. This hand could have been better, but I don't think it's a pitch back hand. I'm not going to counter that. I'm sorry. That, that one I'm not going to force spike, uh, especially on my end step. It's draw a card. It is essentially Whisper the Muse with no up. Well, with up, big upside, but we're probably not going to get to that point in the game, but we'll see. All right. Well. Uh, duress. See what is going on over there. Try to counter this if he wants. All right, sleight of hand, mana drain. All right, what is going on in their hand here? Chase memory adept. Card's pretty good against us. Sensor, miscalc. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to get rid of the mana drain because I really don't want to give them that. I'm going to leave this up. So, Mistress Factory, it's interesting. Could have braid that thing if they uh, decide to put it out. Or we could wasteland it. Don't really know what I want to do yet with it. They can cycle their miscalc or their sensor. Yeah, they're going to cycle their sensor. That makes sense to me. I mean, I'm not going to play into them. Um, so this is gone, and they have a new card. They're replacing it. Okay, they did find a land. Okay. Pyroblast is a pretty solid pickup here. I mean, it would have been better as a threat, I think, but most of my threats are Delve-based threats, so, you know, it, it may not even work regardless. Yep, cycle that off. So that is gone, that is gone. We know three cards in their six-card hand, now seven-card hand, so let's see what they do. Okay. Probably fetching a Tundra, I would assume. Okay. I 
think I'm going to just put that out there like that. I mean, I got it. It, it displays that I probably have either two spells or one spell that I want to cast for five. If I were my opponent, I would probably guess Mystic Confluence, but I do want to have the availability of hard casting a Force of Volks. I likely will if they um, if they try to uh, just slam it. Well, let's fight. Well, do want to stop hitting lands and hope, hopefully start hitting some stuff like my opponents hit. Uh, Treasure Cruise is a solid pickup for them. Um, I think at this point it's safe to do this. We're just going to blow this up. Take them off mana on their turn. If they want to cast, like, uh, something on this turn, they can do it right now. Nope, okay. Okay. Oh, you get to look. Okay. All right, now we have two counter spells, which is going to be a surprise to our opponent, but we really don't have a good way to transition into a threat, which, like we talked about, is one of the issues. And we're a few less cards deep than our opponent here. This thing turns into cards, right, for a bunch of mana. All right. I'm not going to pop that. I'm going to save it for Brainstorm and the like. A Braid is probably the worst card by hand, and Mana Leak is starting to slowly kind of become vestigial. But if it's, it's a decent second counter at a minimum. Hmm. Well then... We'll find an underground C here. I think I will use this mana. And we'll cast this fellow out. Hmm. I think I am fine paying one more mana. Takes away days or complicate if I have to double counter spell here. But this at least gets a threat on the board and forces my opponent to do something about it. They're going to tap out. Alright, well, I'm, I'm cool with that. I don't really want to have that happen, so your power sink can get countered. Alright. Hmm. I'm going to counter this. If they, if they have a counter for my counter, okay. Okay, you got it. Nope. I don't think I play that out. I think I hold it in hand. Um, the Pierce is out of their hand at this point, so we know they have Jace plus 2x. Okay. Well, unfortunately, this is probably going to be Dig Through Time. Yeah, opponent's draw has been a little bit better than ours has. We'll say that much. But like I said, I do think this is a rough matchup for my decks. I have cards like a Braid in my deck. 
which I don't think I could cut. I mean, I didn't have anything really good to bring back in for it. Yep, there's the dig through time as expected. And I could force of will this, and then I run the risk of having to face down a Jace. All right, they're not going to even cast. They're going to wait till my end step, which makes sense to tap me down. All right, well, now we're kind of hitting a mana pocket, which is a no bueno. Maybe I should just let them go for it. I mean, I just I feel like I have to counter this. Like, is Jace Jace is probably better? Right, they're not going to go for it there. Hmm. Interesting. I have to let this resolve, I think, guys. I mean, he's going to get two great cards, but, like, I can't, you know. This is kind of the break sometimes. Like, you know, folks complain about Treasure Cruise and DTT, and this is this is oppressive. Like, in the mirror match, they're very oppressive. Like, when you get them first and you have the ability to cast them, you know, it um it can be very game-breaking. Now, I did fetch there. Um, I debated counterspelling with uh, the Force of Will, but I don't think that makes sense. Um, I think what we do is uh, we counter his threats at this point, because I don't think we're going to be able to beat him on cards. We need to get into our own TC and DTT. The problem's going to be is he's probably filling his hand up with interaction and counter spells, and it's going to be very tough for us to um, to protect any threat that we want to land. Um, you know, so... All right, well, that, at a minimum, was a very solid pickup, so we'll go black and red here, and rise fall. I mean, I don't think it's going to get us out of the situation, but... Hmm. Do I counter this to get one more card? No. Force them to tie up their mana. They're going to cast something. I mean, yeah, I get two more random cards but I'm losing a card that I know does does something I need to have it too, which is counter a spell. Uh, that could be wrong. I mean, I guess it's too random, and they could have, like, a bad card, like, one bad card in their hand that we could leave them with, but I don't think that's correct. So they more than likely have a counter spell here. I'm going to go ahead and let them use their counter spell. Yeah, getting to treat TC and DTT, um, you know, both in a game in the top 30 cards, like, you're probably going to win that. And... Two mana counter spell. All right. Well, I basically need to draw, you know, a snapcaster. All right. Syncopate for two. You got it. Nope. And they could try to mill us, but um, they're gonna mill us. This is bad. Actually, they don't want to do this. All right. Well, this is. Would have been a great draw if I drew this a couple turns ago. All right, well, Counterspell's gone, so now they can start doing whatever they're going to do. Um, I do have Pyroblast in my deck, so at a minimum, if I do hit the Snapcaster, I could possibly blow up the Jace. Yep. All right, my Counterspell's gone, but I don't really want Counterspell right now. I need to deal with the board. And if my opponent has anything of relevance here, the game's probably just over. So, yeah, and they still have a basically a suspended draw spell um, sitting on the table right now. All right, well, we need to see that a long time ago. Um, um, you know what? Cancel. I'm going to fetch first. My hand size isn't big enough where I think that... Um, I don't think damage is relevant here either, so untapped. So this uh, counter spell probably not... This leak, um, confluence, or do I want that? Like, drain seems kind of marginal, too. I have him already, so we'll just do this and probably get countered here. The chances are, like, probably, like, 85% this is getting countered. Okay. All right.
try to do this. Okay, Decree of Justice is down. I mean, you can play this thing out. Alright, look at my deck. Well, I have a TC, so... Okay. Shuffles my library up, alright. Well, I guess my top decks were good. Okay, they put a fetch land on my in my graveyard. And they draw into an answer. Well, hopefully not, but we'll see. Okay, Field of Rune. Okay. Okay. Alright, they get to draw one here. Alright, let's get into some cards. See if we can find a Snapcaster. Okay, we found a Snapcaster. Well, maybe we can get there. We'll see. I mean, if we get Wrath this turn, we probably don't get there, but we're on F6 at this point. I mean, I'm banking on the Cryptic Command, bouncing, if anything relevant happens, bouncing something. All right, Brainstorm, cool. Okay, Snapcaster. Alright, so they're going to treasure cruise. Go for mass. Uh, certainly very far ahead of us on cards. Alright, what have we got? We got a Wrath of God or something? Alright, Helm of Obedience. Do you have the combo? I think, oddly enough, this is correct. Like, I think you just blow this thing up. Say no thank you.
put this down they can try to mill us for two that's fine I'm a delve deck and we'll see if we can fight our way out of this hole the one cool thing about your opponent hitting all their good cards in the beginning is that they run out of good cards in the middle and back of that side of their deck and we can tend to run into them but we'll see um... do i care about this um... i think okay you can have this or the rest of that crap he throws all the other crap out okay Try to get some value here. This may get countered, but get my snappy back. And run to a lapse, and they get my Vendillion click. No, I actually don't want to put that in the graveyard. So we're going to tell them to go. Yeah, maybe we're turning this game around. We shall see. Okie doke. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get into a fight over that. Oh, not this. God damn it. I didn't mean to cast that. <laughs> That's fine. We can Cryptic Command it. Spellburst? Memory Lapse it. Try to cryptic command this. Probably get countered, but I mean, if we do, we do. Alright, we do not. Maybe we should just bounce Snappy there again just to like counter more spells. Alright. No. This allows a great draw. Very solid pickup there. I do think, however, we need to protect ourselves here from just getting comboed out, uh, put on top, and just um, go ahead and blow this up right now. They can mill me for two if they want and put me closer to search. Yep. Yep, that's fine. And yeah, I lost some decent cards there, but at the same time, my opponent lost a vital combo piece. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm very close to searching for his Kanta here as well. Field of Rune will obviously stop that, but it's a two for one. And it's a tempo loss for them. They could obviously, actually they could Ghost Quarter as well, but I have Islands in the deck. I believe there's four. Well, I do think, however, that Complicate is losing its utility here. So I'm debating on cycling it. Yeah, I think it's a cycle card here. Just leave up Disallow during end step. Much I love the card. I'm trying to cast something here like a Sphinx's Rev or something. It could. You can stifle this. I mean, that's fine too. It's a card of your hand. Actually, I can Disallow whatever they do. Alright, well, you can try to draw four, but I'm going to try to counter it. Alright, counter spell. 
Yep, spell burst. Alrighty. No. All right. I could have also just gone for a fact there, but I think I'd rather, you know, force them to be nervous about what I may do. They also have kind of an obligation to deal with the uh, search for his content this turn, I think. Do I care about that anymore? Okay. I mean, their helm's gone, so okay. I should have looked at what they discarded. Just a land, okay. We're going to go look in here. Grab a Jace. Wow. All right. Yeah, I just ran them out. So is there anything we do differently? Hmm. I don't think so. We just... We definitely were threat light in that game, but we managed to play our way out of it. Now we flummoxed playing around the, uh, the silly flip card in the first game. I haven't played around the card in a while. It's obviously very good in the control mirror. I don't think it's great in, um, against the aggro decks of the format. I just think it's going to be tough to get it flipped. And while, they're, while you're trying to do that, they're just going to be attacking you to death. But it's obviously pretty high impact if it gets resolved early in this matchup. So we'll see how it goes. Tidal probably should have come out. T -Del, well, actually, I guess it does deal with the uh, Decree of Justice. Okay, well, this hand is interesting. I'm going to keep this, but it's kind of dicey. I mean, if the Bob gets to resolve, then it's pretty good. Uh, it may even be a turn three, Bob. All right, you taxi and probe. Interesting. This this hand is hoping to hit lands, but this is a 37 land deck, so it should generally hit quite well. Okay. Well, we hit a land. Not the best land to hit, but still a land. Hopefully no turn two search for his content, but I suppose I have a way to deal with that. Just the early filtration is pretty big if they have it. All right, so the chances of them having an answer to any of the cards that I play is pretty high. Um, hmm. I'm just going to play Lava Claw, reach out and say go. Play Wasteland out next turn and try to resolve the Bob more than likely. Bob is going to be very strong in this matchup if we can get it to resolve. We do have Pierce to protect it, and I have to... I'm not quite positive on whether I had Pierce or not when I first uh, cast. When I first had my opening hand. I think I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, well, that's actually not a bad pickup either. I think I'm going to go for old Bob here. Um, actually, wait. No, we're not going to tap that way. We're going we're gonna to tap this way and say Bobby Bob. And go ahead and, I suppose, try to counter it. Maybe they have a Planeswalker they can play next turn, but I do have a decent number of man lands. Now, if they have, like, Spell Snare, then we just get had here. I'm not going to try to counter. Well, I can't counter a Spell Snare. And, all right, three mana. Spell Pierce. Do you have days? No, okay. Bob resolves then. Get ahead on cards as fast as we can. Now a four mana planeswalker would be a little frightening. But we do have the Bob. It could be Jace, just bounce. Hmm. Okay, well, doing that and then doing nothing, I think is okay. Hmm. We'll play out the Pyromancer here. I'm going to go ahead and just brainstorm here and look for a land drop. And hopefully not get landlocked. Okay, we did not. 
Oh, I actually like all of these, so I'm going to put this and then this. Actually, I F that up royally, but whatever. Luckily, we don't have lands on top. We do. <laughs> We're dumb. Does he have a wrath effect? Okay. Yep, you got it. That would have happened regardless of making our land drop, so there is that. We are going to take the damages here, and I'm just going to play out a search for his content, leave up memory laps, and go. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if they want to trade mana here, I'm fine with this. I'm kind of telling them that I have something. All right, they're not going to fall for the bluff. All right, they just go for it. Yep, they got it. That was a ballsy attack. I mean, it was a good bluff attack, but I think it was credible. <laughs> Doesn't fall for bluffs, I guess. Noted. Noted to self. <laughs> Alright, do they have a snare now? So, uh, memory lapse her. Say no thank you. Do you have a snare or a pierce? They have something. Okay, mystical tutor for something. Alright. Well, they're going to Mystical Tutor put that on top and then put Tamiyo on top of that. Okay. Decree of Justice. Okay. Nope. Yep. Um, I'm going to bottom that. I'm going to fetch awkwardly enough. And I'm shortest on what? Black mana right now? Yes. Yes, I do want to put that in my graveyard. Alright, and go. So another drawing to Cree this turn. We'll just blow this up now. We know they're drawing to Cree. It's one less dude, and I can get to go Factor Fiction into like uh, into something like Toxic Deluge. Okay. Okay. You get three dudes here and a Cephalid Coliseum. Let's go ahead and do this, see what we find. All right. Well, we found T-Dell anyway, so I need Treasure Cruise. Interesting what pile I take. I'm not really sure. Alrighty, yeah, the Mystical Tutor would have gotten DTT, blow up his board, DTT, he's, he's hell-bent. We pr pretty much have it. Now, we biffed the first game there, which kind of stank, but, um... Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's fun to play around some Bisplays. plays. I've kind of been distracted as of recent, because well, I'm doing a big move right now. I'm actually moving across the continental United States um, to, uh, to Florida, from Colorado. So, big things going on in life. 
Alrighty, looks like we still have a game going on, so let's go ahead and check it out, guys. I'm kind of happy to have won that one. Um, I do think that I do think Jack's list is a little more rogue than most uh, blue white decks. My blue white deck, I think, will beat my Grixis deck almost 90% of the time. Um, I don't think it's much of a contest. So there's that. Oh, 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 dude! Yeah, you don't have to give me a pack, man. All right, guys, sorry about that. He was giving me the pack of Ricks. I do appreciate it, man, to Jack. I just, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to accept, uh, I'm not going to accept, like, alternate support. I do appreciate the alternate support, but, you know, just give it to, to other players um, that are that are in the format. Bandit Key's a good choice, because I know he's on a budget. Smuggler's Copter, one of the dumbest cards that's been printed in a long time. You probably hear me say that if you watch any of my 100 card singleton content or or cube content when it's involved. The card is um, just dumb. Um, Band and standard. And justifiably so. Like It was just a new mechanic. They didn't really know what they were doing. But like it basically makes aggro like just as good as it, w as it was before at doing what it does while also taking away its cons, which is that it's a top deck driven deck. It's a little variance driven after you get to the mid game. And you'll tend to lose if you just you know hit some lands or flood out. Um, Smuggler's Copter obviously stops that. But right now, Smuggler's Copter is on blocking duty, so it's not looking very good for Smuggler's Copter because a Ficker of Destiny is rocketed all the way up to 8-9. Uh, oh, it's got, he's got a veteran armor in play. An 8-9. Alright, it's going to bounce the Smuggler's Copter to stop. Thanks, man. Aura of Silence. I actually bored that in my Death and Taxes list. I'm wondering what he's using for you. He's using to get rid of bonds. Okay, so he can gain some life to not die, I suppose. He's got the Tapper. The Tapper can deal with the figure. Question to be, can he outrace this, like, nonsense going on? I guess he can have a big attacker, but, like, it doesn't get through this wall of stuff, I don't think. And Offensa, also just a power card. Alright, so this goes Exalted. I assume after combat he plays out his, um... His Smuggler's Copter to block once again because the 8 damage is not lethal this turn, but it's um, it's a 2 turn clock still. He's going to gain 8 life, which puts him to 16, but takes 8 in the next 2 turns, so unless he has a flyer. I guess it buys him 3 turns. Um, Alright, block. I mean, he could even, like, path to exile his own dude, possibly, just to, like, keep him off one extra turn of, uh, from this interaction. So what I'm saying is, if he plays a Smuggler's Copter, he blocks, fogs out 8 damage takes three, though. I guess the three, I'm not calculating the three and the three, the six. So, yeah, maybe not quite. Um, I guess the tapper also kind of helps. So, yeah, and offensive going first makes sense. Veteran, actually, let's think here. So, that's a three, three. Now, if it was a five, five, you could actually kill the armor first, and then the Anafenza would fall with it. Probably a fair enough trade. Like, Anafenza is a beast in the mirror match. Like it's it's a very good card in the mirror match because in a way it's kind of like um, evasion because it just makes your dudes into the abyss because they're just a little bit bigger. Generally, it's going to take like one to two counters to do that though because first strike so relevant in the uh, the early to mid game. Um, but it, it can tend to, to lopside some games. Poor Acacian Javelin here is not doing a lot of work here due to the fact that all of these things are just mono huge. Given the uh, toughness buff. Uh, from Veteran Armor and uh, all the plus one, plus one counters floating around. So he's got tap mana up for his whip quarter, which will more than likely tap the figure of Destiny because he just can't take... I guess he could block it and tap the Sultari Priest. And he takes three in the air off of the other flyer. Um, 
down to nine. He's basically fighting for draw steps right now. ML is basically fighting for draw steps. Bandit Keith is just trying to solidify his gains. Um, the best draws for Bandit Keith are going to be removal uh, because getting rid of the whip quarter means that he can significantly increase the clock. Whip quarter basically, and, and like I, whip quarter is an awesome card. It's also a decent mirror breaker, but really more so where it shines is against um, the mid range decks where like you know they play like some dorks and then like they have like one good mid range threat. But if you can attack through it that turn, which Whip Quarter allows you to do because you can tap it, then generally you can get into a mode where you can just chump attack every turn, and it generally tends to be good enough. Um, I don't. I think this is actually not a bad play by ML, but it does lower his clock down to two turns. Because what he's probably going to try to do here is see if he can Smuggler's Copter. I guess he can't Smuggler's Copter into something. No, he's going to do it here. He's going to trade it with... He's going to block the Spirit, I guess. Yeah. Oh, he can block the spirit and then Ication Javelineers the spirit out of the sky. That's that, that's a cogent play. That makes sense. Um, he gets to loot a card too. So if his last card is land, which I presume it probably is, or a bad bad like one drop creature that's not good anymore. Um, it would take something really special. Like I don't know. I can't think of a one sided anarchy. I mean, maybe like Her uh, glare of heresy to like deal with the spirit permanently. All right, Sundering Growth, or, yeah, Sundering Growth, yeah, that card's not phenomenal here. Actually, not a bad cyborg card. I mean, it's probably st almost strictly better Disenchant. There are some token-making um, effects inside these decks. Uh, to include, card I mentioned earlier today, Precinct Captain, you know, stuff like Bremaz. All right, Baffling End is taking care of the the 3-3 three, three, uh, Whip Quarter, I would assume. Yeah. And now the Hurt Box is coming in these skies because he's got an 8-9 flying in for damages and he's got a 3-3 three, three that's unblockable essentially unless ML can find himself a Shadow Creature. That would buy him another turn. We know one of the cards he had was land or he drew a land for the turn but found hopefully something for himself. Alright, well the game has just ended because that is not going to be capable of getting up in the skies yet. Um, although if he had another turn he could get up in the skies but the problem would be it's a 8-8 eight, eight at that point versus an 8-9 first strike um, flyer so... The 8-9 is going to win that, unfortunately, every time. I don't tend to think Dauntless Bodyguard is that great in the mirror match, because most of the effects that White Weenie or Death and Taxes use to kill um, creatures tends to be exiling effects. It's very rare, like unless it's in combat itself, that creatures die um, in the opposing side. I mean, they, they die, but through combat, not through... Um, not through uh, spells themselves, which is why I think Dauntless Bodyguard becomes good, because then it kind of becomes a one-for-one -one almost, um, as opposed to, like, combat, where you may be chump attacking, and it's not really doing that much. Um, hey, what's up, man? Oh, he's mentioning it here. My bad. Alrighty, guys. Well, Bandit wins that matchup. So, we're going to have one more round. Let me go on a quick pause until uh, we get... Alright, guys, we're back. Um, so, we're going to be watching Control vs. White Weenie. I'm actually curious to see this as this plays out. So, I'm not playing round three. Uh, my opponent uh, requested a draw, so I gave him a draw on it. Um, they're playing White Weenie. It was uh, Bandit Keith, who was undefeated. So, we'll see how the cards may fall as far as placement in the tournament. But, um, I'm generally pretty happy to offer someone a buy. Or, not a buy, but a draw if they want one. Um, as, you know, I... I see myself as the host, and I actually don't mind watching the games and getting to kind of capture some of the interaction. I do think this is going to be a tougher matchup for Jack Schlegel because of how he's built um, his blue-white deck. I do think his blue-white deck is probably better than my own build of blue-white miracles for the mirror match. It looks like its counterspell count is probably higher, and it probably has a higher threat density as well. Um, my guess is that he probably sideboard down a lot of his uh, sweeper effects uh, against me. And I think that was kind of his, to his detriment in our last game. And my guess is like when he was up like you know six cards on us, he probably just had a bunch of permission. And because of the board advantage we were able to kind of garner through you know incrementally using up his mana on his end step and fighting him on his turn and resolving just a couple bodies, um, we were able to kind of get there. I mean, and if the if the um, nickel bull was ever flipped, which it was pretty cool to get to play him by the way, uh, first time casting that dude. Um, you know, if that ever flipped, the game was over, because I'm just drawing to a turn, you know, killing whatever he plays, killing Planeswalkers, um, eventually milling his, his library. It's basically like, uh, what, what is it called? Uh, like Jace the Mind Sculptor, essentially. It's a better version of Jace the Mind Sculptor, but it costs like a bazillion more mana, so it's not strictly better. It's just a better effect if you were to take them and assess them in a vacuum, but card itself seems pretty good. I don't think it's often going to get to flip and be used. I think oftentimes when it does, when it has the ability to be flipped and you can do nothing about it, you're probably going to see a lot of concessions. Um, I 
I will say this, I have not I did not like how I played that game. I think I played decent against ML. I got a little lucky in my second to last game against him, my second game against him, uh, where I drew the demonic tutor to find uh, the answer to the board and stay at one life and not die. Um, the first game I played against Jack, I kind of pun- I pitched. I mean, I, I pitched that one. Um, should have reread. I can't say that card's name. Errario or <laughs> Aterio, whatever. The flip card that counters your first spell every turn, which my deck is just you know, Grixis is not going to beat that. It can't deal with an enchantment for one. I could find like a Pyroblast or a Reb, but I don't have it in the deck at that point. Um, so like realistically, I have to draw two very good threats, resolve one of the two threats, hope he doesn't have counter spell, and. You know, the chances of that are pretty low. Alright, Helm of Obedience is a fast way to end the game. But like I was saying, he's on a clock here, so he's got, you know, probably two turns left. I mean, ostensibly the board says he has three turns, but I think the I think it's a pretty safe assessment that um, his opponent on four cards has numerous additional threats that he could or, you know, could or will play out. I've actually not been very impressed with the Helm combo. Like, I know I started off, um, you know, some of my blue-white decks in the undercard singleton format with uh, the Helm Rip combo. Um, because it is kind of like good main deck hate against like the graveyard shenanigans, and it's a decent enough combo against mid range, but it's just a very large volume of mana to do. And I kind of just transitioned over to entreat the angels because it's a single card that can do that. Yes, there's a setup with it, but you know the setup is pretty common, including cards like Jace, um, the Mind Sculptor, Brainstorm, um, Portent. There's quite a few cards that can help set it up in the deck. Um, so I tend to find I like that combo, quote unquote, because it's really just one card a little better. Alright, Wither Orb is a game changer. Now, I assume he has a counter spell, and then if, if Golden Lynn does this right, he'll play out a one drop threat after this has been countered, and hope to fade a Wrath effect. We're going to get to see this game and, and really kind of tell what Jack's deck is, is all about, because um, it's, it's kind of hard for me to tell whether he has a bunch of main deck Wrath effects. He si- or he sideboards into them, or he just doesn't have them, period, because we didn't get to see them in game one. We lost to the flip card in game one, well, really to our own misplay in game one, uh, but the flip card, all right, well, he's digging now, so he's obviously not not quite getting there. If he fetches, he's at six, he can go to one here. Hmm. Well, he can't double fetch or else he's dead, so he can fetch one time. Um, if Goldlin has any equipment or buff... Like, he could have the Axe Bone Splitter. Um, I, from time to time, run Bone Splitter. I think it's actually a pretty decent card. Um, there's a new one of those, but it costs two mana to equip and two mana to cast, I think. Which is not quite where you want to be. Um, bone Splitter costing one and one. It basically makes it a haste to power creature that can't be killed by Wrath Effects. As long as you have additional creatures. Which is generally pretty decent. I mean, it's no Smuggler's Copter, that's for sure, but... I do think as far as one man equipment goes, Bone Splitter is probably one of the best out there. Ah, uh, correction. I'm sorry, Skull Clamp. <laughs> Forgot about that little guy. That's a guy. All right, this game just ended. Um, yeah, there's Day of Judgment, but he doesn't have the mana to cast it. That's going to be game. So I think he probably is running three to four, probably four Wraths. My blue-white deck runs quite a few. Terminus is kind of the backbone of the deck. Like So it's, it's Mystical Tutor, Personal Tutor, a um, bunch of draw effects for on their turn, and... Um, Day of Judgment, or not Day of Judgment, I'm sorry, Terminus and uh, Entreat the Angels, uh, which makes Mystical Tutor and Personal Tutor and, like, you know, uh, Mystical Teachings, which you can find either of those two cards, um, pretty heavily weaponized because you can either utilize it to close the game out, win the game, uh, if you're in control, or you can use it to get way ahead from behind. Um, but here, like I said, I don't think it matters um, unless he can play, like... Actually, there's cards that would do it, like, so... Radiant Fountain, the colorless land that comes to play untapped and gains you two life would do it here. If he is running that, uh, that would allow him to fetch twice and stay at two life and blow up the board. However, the Selfless Spirit is going to stop that. So really, you need Terminus or Hallowed Burial to deal with this board state in a singular card. Um, So I think here it's probably concession time because you just can't stay alive through this. Yeah, Blue White Control is a sweet deck. I just I think that right now the meta, if you're not built for beating aggro regularly, you're gonna have a difficult time with it. I do think the last matchup that Jack had against me is actually probably an easier matchup for him. I'd have to look at his deck list, but I, I don't generally like playing Grixis against um, hard control decks because it's more mid rangey, and it, the more mid rangey a deck is, the more it tends to lose to hard control. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to game two. Quick pause, guys. I'm going to use the restroom. We'll be right back to finish coverage on this event. All right, guys, we're back, and we're, uh, again, watching uh, the White Weenie player play against uh, Jack Schlegel's uh, Blue, White, or Azorius control deck. 
No turn one play. Precinct Captain's a fine one, but I think now he's going to see a memory lapse or something along those lines just to buy some tempo. All right, Mana Drain. Um, I think he transitions the Mana Drain into a uh, turn three, uh, four drop or five drop. That would be extremely powerful. Uh, allow him to pull ahead significantly in the game and possibly get deeper in his deck. If I think it's Jason Mind Sculptor here on an open board is probably a good game. Now we're going to see Aruna Protection White. Wow. That's a little bit... Um, narrow, in my opinion, but it, the meta is very narrow itself, and he's looking for a land here, I assume, on four cards. The issue that you're going to have with Rune Protection White is that um, you, you can't generally afford to leave up that much mana, and because they're a permanent-based deck, not a spell-based deck, you'll oftentimes get overwhelmed, um, and it'll essentially operate like a Tangle Wire or a Rashadden Port where your mana is just not being used to present threats, it's being used to just react, which over time is going to favor them, um, and why I'm you know, not a fan of uh, the Rune-style cards, or even the Cops sometimes are a little little weaker, um, in my opinion. But it depends on what you're playing against. I think Cop Red can be a very uh, suitable sideboard card in a lot of matchups uh, against uh, more spell-based uh, damage decks. Uh, but if they have a pretty decent mix of both permanents and spells to do their damage, then oftentimes you'll see that um, that, that tactic, uh, that sideboard or hoser card, often doesn't really do what you need. So we're going to see a Selfless Spirit here, which is obviously a good one in the matchup because Wrath Effects are going to be how the blue-white deck pulls ahead in this. All right, well, obviously he's made a stride on mana at this point, but he's not casting anything additional. But his opponent appears to be the same way, so if he does have some sort of effect that could be utilized to sweep here, I think if I'm on Jack's legal side, I'm pretty happy to see this. It doesn't really do much. Um, and so, doke. He's going to utilize his mana to do this, which makes sense. I mean, the, the Honor of the Pure is actually really terrible against the, uh, is, is one of the cards, the few cards that are is punishing against uh, the Rune of Protection White or, like, Cop White. Because, um, oftentimes, you know, you want to just get more bodies down to overwhelm um, their their mana base at that point. Well, it appears the top of his deck is delivering lands uh, after missing, I believe, on turn three, or having to anticipate into one on turn three. But he could have also feigned that. He could have had a more mana-rich hand. Goes and goes for a preordain here. One bottom, one top. I assume he wants a singular answer to selfless spirit. So when this board horizontally grows on the white weenie player's side, um, he can exploit a like four for one advantage card like Wrath of God. Well, basically every counter spell in his deck is castable outside of Mystic Confluence or a hard cast Force of Will. Spectral Procession is probably a must counter because that will overwhelm the co the Rune of Protection uh, white. So this is a definite must counter, um, or you have to kill the self a spirit and then blow up the board. Let's look at this graveyard. So if he has Snapcaster, he could go for Anticipate here. I guess if he had Snapcaster, he'd probably just counter that. He's going to protect himself from this thing. I think we're going to see is a common symptom in these matchups. Is that the, the control player on the cop effect is going to get overwhelmed. Four perms is already, you know, two more than he's capable of actually protecting against. And at some point, he does need to make the transition to winning the game, which is what is the difficult part of running cards like this, is that the ability to transition is not um, actualized, or you have to take a significant uh, amount of damage uh, with possibility of game loss um, in the mid-game to do the transition. And right now you can see he's already still going to be getting two damage in, so if uh, his opponent has anything relevant to cast, then... That could happen regardless. I mean, it's going to still, you know, get more damage in each turn. Okay. Yep. I mean, personally, I'd be half tempted to allow that to happen, uh, because I don't think this card's doing that much right now. I mean, it's, it's buying time, but it's not allowing you to develop. So I think you allow this to go. Is it an obstructionist, this? Hmm. Okie doke. Well, it's almost too bad it wasn't a, a bounce spell, because you could have forced uh, the Oblivion Ring to, to kill one of the threats on board. That would have been exceedingly really relevant this turn, but it does buy him more time with his cop. But yeah, it's looking like Jack's probably not going to take this one down. 
I think keeps are very important in this, and uh, if you generally don't have the white mana to support a wrath effect, or you don't have a wrath effect available to you through uh, numerous uh, tutor effects, then you're generally speaking going to be ill-favored to win it. Okay, well, that's an additional Tundra there, which means that he can now fog out the attacks of everything that's on the board. But this is roughly card parity with his opponent, and essentially the same mana parity, because you can account for if his lands is essentially being um, tapped every turn, so they basically both have three lands. We'll see what happens here. the one upside is if uh, Goldwyn's playing a more um, anthem-based deck that the rune could at least buy the time into the relevant draw steps he needs. But really what needs to happen is you see like a Swords to Plowshares or Path to Exile here to get rid of the Self of Spirit and um, enable, you know, the, the card advantage cards to be played. It actually allow Jack to get back into the game. We do this whole dance again. Hmm. It's interesting. So we obviously have something to cast here on end step. We'll see what we have. Oh, I have a pretty good idea. It's probably going to be the Confluence um, bouncing uh, numerous cards. Likely Spirits. Or you can counter this and bounce two of them, which would be decent as well. Hmm, interesting. It's not that. I wonder why it would take the damage there, then. Doesn't seem like the best of plays. Okay, that, that has the ability to turn the game around. The unfortunate thing is he does not have avail availability of black mana, which would give him something like Toxic Deluge, um, where he could get around the uh, claws on the Self of Spirit to uh, uh, to protect the rest of uh, Golden Wind, the aggro player's creatures. So I can see him going two routes. Yeah, Dig Through Time is one obvious route. Um, another, if he runs something like Comeuppance, um, he could play that as well and prevent basically a turn of attacks and force a sacrifice on the uh, Self of Spirit. So we're going to see a dig here. My assumption is right now that what Jack Schlegel's hand looks like is probably one to two Planeswalkers um, that he cannot safely resolve because, while well, he's able to protect himself with the Bruin, he cannot protect uh, his uh, his relevant threats from uh, the threats of the aggro player at this point. So, we're going to see what he's able to find here. Yeah, likely a pass, and then he's probably going to do something relevant on the next term, I guess it would be. Again, remember, essentially four of his mana are, is not available to him at this point in time. That's one that's a must counter, essentially. So, we'll see if he's able to deal with it or not. Um, Winter Orb obviously ends games against control decks. It looks like he has the answer, probably in the form of Negate or something along the line. Okay, Syncopate. He's going to only protect against one creature. He's taking six, which is a pretty sizable hit. He's going to take him down to half of his life total that he currently has. Um, which is a big deal. Okay, and a path to exile. Alright, so it looks like he is going to have access. That's an interesting choice. I think he would, should go for the land there. It'll allow him to develop out his mana base basically for free, get the two for one. I don't think the indestructibility on the spirits is that relevant. The only reason that would be a good play is if you had effects that become relevant. 
Okay, he knows his hand, so he does have portal. All right. Well, this could be a wrath, I assume, and then he probably has a counter spell, possibly for the portal. So he does know his hand. Oh, there's the supreme verdict, which is going to deal with the board now. And force Gordon Golden led into a position where he has to uh, where he has to present a threat again. Um, so here's where the control player is going to pull ahead. And dig through time was huge there, as was path to exile. All right, so those are the pantheons. One, you Jeff definitely allowed to resolve. I think. Yep. You don't want to get hit by it, but at this point you have tons of mana. Um, Griff Spoon's an irrelevant. That's that's something you can definitely let happen. There's just a an enhancing enchantment on a singular threat, which means Rune can basically get a two for one every turn. At the cost of mana yet again. Alright, well it looks like he's sizably flooded out, but with Arch of Araska plus the City's Blessing, he should be able to start pulling ahead and use some relevant cards to cast. Alright. I use the Arun. Alright, Grasp of Fate to deal with the Aruna Protection. My assumption would be you go for a draw here and see if you can counter this because you really don't want to have to continue to blow up the board in one for one. Um, and he's at a point in the game where his life total is low enough that um, he would have to start using um, effects that were essentially multiple for ones to deal with uh, the onboard threats. Like Wrath of God for one dude. So I think what we're going to end up seeing here is, uh, yep, draw. Let's see what you can find. Oh no, he's casting uh, Sphinx's Revelation. Well, that'll probably end the game just as well. So, Grasp of Fate's kind of a turn off. Um, yep, takes that. But obviously, with six cards and a sizable mana advantage right now, I think he's probably heavily favored still to, to end this game. Does not attack. Alright, maybe that was Moto Lag or something. I don't know how relevant it would have been, but obviously getting the damage, and if you're the aggro player, is imperative. Each point counts, right? All right, we're brainstorming here on a lead, which either means he has a fetch land in hand, or he did not find what he needed to. Oh, don't say that, man. Um, so we'll see, right? Obviously, you know, six cards is a lot, but he could just draw into nonsense. I think his deck's going to be okay to have the fetch, so... That makes that a stronger play. Obviously, you know, if you lead on that and don't play a fetch at this point in the game, generally speaking, your hand's probably weaker. But given the raw volume of mana he has, I mean, it makes sense to do it first if you do have the option to fetch afterwards. Yeah, man, and more cards. So at this point, uh, Golden Link could probably concede the game, uh, but my guess would be he's not going to. There's a few players that'll play it out at the bitter end, uh, but I think at this point, it's 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 all in the books, or all but in the books. Yeah, there are probably 5% chances or less that he does not win this, but I think that's pretty low. I can return that little dude. Yeah, I probably should return it, actually. He would draw as well, but he's on 7 cards. There's really no point in drawing here. He just bounce and say, hey, figure it out. And then when he plays multiple threats in the following turn, you know, just blow up the board again. Draw, blow up the board. <sighs> yep. Well, now we're going to see the long, painful process of how uh, Jack's deck, or blue-white in general, just tends to win. Because I think we've gone into the, the point of inevitability. Um, Sphinx's Rev is really it. That was the point at which I don't think the aggro player could really come back and, and finish off the, the good work they had done in the early game. Interesting. Did I counter this? Hmm. Alright, that's interesting. So, evidently, what he's telling him is he does not have a Wrath effect, so he's looking for one. So, I think I tend to like to leave the Dissolve available to me. I guess it's possibly probably knows one card in his hand, or maybe two. If his opponent does not play any threats here, though, after that, then that means he has, like, basically all answer cards, which are horrendous in this matchup. <coughs> guys. Alright, well, another card drawer. Yeah, this, this game is all but in the books.
And again, though, I mean, I did also think that we were out. What does this do? I have to read this. Yikes. Yeah, that's going to be hard to beat. <laughs> I think Jack has significant hate against White Weenie. I actually have not seen this card in forever. It's a golden oldie right there. Let's pull up the preview panel for you. You can see it. Oh, interesting. We need back to the card there. Yeah, cool art too. Even a foil. All right. Well, we're gonna watch how this ends. I think I think it's probably safer for Golden to concede just to, so there's not a, a game win on time. But we shall see. All right, source for Spyglass. Eh. I can see that going either way. All right, just counterspells it. That makes sense to me. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty good against the Planeswalkers that he either has in hand or has on the board already. Um, and are likely to end the game. I have to reread this thing's ultimate. This one says your opponent can't cast non-creature spells, so I'm not mistaken, yeah. Okay, well, that's more, more hatred likely coming. Well, actually, that could get the other half of a combo. Helm of Obedience, yeah. Okay, that's basically the, uh, the flip card that we saw before, the two-mana flip card. That's the same effect that has. Obviously with a significantly longer lead time, but it's obviously free. <coughs> Alright, yep, more cards, more cards. The sad thing is, or the scary thing is, or crazy maybe, is that, you know, one, one player has, you know, close to 15 lands in play or something asinine like that, and the other player has three. Um, my assumption would be probably just what... Oh, he's going to light two for the other half of the combo, and then he probably has to draw a spell to get into it, but that, that begs the question, unless he drew into this this turn... Why would he just use his Planeswalkers to draw into it? Because he could have done it for free. But this is a game win. So he's got the helm. Now he has the rest. And if he can draw this, then he will set up the combo and win. I mean, if he can, he'll win next turn anyways. I mean, his opponent could have, like, uh... can't think of many one-mana spells in white to deal with artifacts on at instant speed. I guess there's a race, but that would not be something that they'd play on the sideboard. It's just too narrow. Oh, Okay. Okay, so he doesn't have it. Well, that does give him sizable risk here. Um, those balls are relevant now. I mean, I guess he could blow up the arch. He could play out the... Uh, I believe he said he has the 4 mana coherence and portal as a draw engine. Which I don't think it's going to be that great. I think if you're going to put draw engines in a white weenie, you want to put cards like, you know, Weathered Wayfarer. Um, you know, I, there's a few, like, uh, uh, Ranger of Aos is quite strong. Alright, that card's going to do not much and draw, and play, and win the game. And hopefully we have enough time to play out the game three here. It's going to be a little tight. We have one player at nine minutes, another at twelve. Not quite yet. Okay, I guess you can do it. No, 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 you don't do it. Oh, he did it now. He effed that up. He needed to let that hit first, because it's going to exile one card, and then it's this, this is going to resolve. Oops. Oh, I guess not. I don't know. Am I wrong? You know, it was already in play. Never mind. I'm silly. I'm being silly. Alright, so... Millage. And you pass it. Don't activate your Planeswalkers. Just save time. F6. You should F6. Yep. You want to play as fast as you can. Because right now your clock's just being bled. All right, guys, quick pause, and we'll be back for uh, Game 3 between Jack Schlegel and Golden Lynn. All right, guys, we're back with the uh, hopefully climactic uh, ending of this uh, three-game match set between Golden Lynn and Jack Schlegel. Um, pretty classic control versus aggro matchup, so we either go fast and dirty if it goes in Golden Lynn's favor for the aggro deck, or it'll be a long, slow grind um, for the control deck piloted by Jack. Goldland does have the advantage of the draw here. And he ideally wants to get down to turn one, a one-drop threat. Yep, there you go, a 2-1. That's actually one of the best ones in the deck, Kithian. <coughs> he does flip into something that is uh, essentially almost impossible to deal with. Alright, sleight of hand. Dig, dig, dig. 
My assumption is that Jack does play some number of detention spheres and oblivion ring effects, which will allow him to kind of uh, get back in it if the Kithian uh, manages to um, flip in the first three turns here. Now his best draw would be two one-drops here. That would be... Okay, well it's not two one-drops at a minimum, which is good for Jack. It means that we're not going to see a flip next turn. But we see a lot of damage. Well, hopefully for him, a white producing land, because he's going to need to uh, pretty rapidly blow up the board here. Yep, there you go. Planes pass it. Likely a two-mana counterspell. Probably miscalc or mana leak. Um, if nothing happens, you can cycle it. But it looks like Goldland's mana is developing quite well. And if he has the ability to cast um, a three drop out, well, we'll see that Kithian flip on the following turn, unless there's a disallow or something like that, or a stifle. Okay, and down to 14. And what is his play? Like Mirror and Crusader or something? Or Bramaz? Alright, Bramaz. That is one of the premier three drops. My question is, do you counter this? You probably have to, almost, because you don't want him to flip the Kithian. But you want his mana to be tied up. That's actually one of the better counters supposed to could use, because that's going to lose, kind of going to lose a lot of utility um, later in the game, because um, virtual mana advantage of the white we need to actually be so much higher, because its spells are just so cheap, um, that if... Their mana bases both develop naturally. Um, that card's utility will lose a lot of uh, a lot of its value. And scrying at this point in the game for the control deck is very relevant, as they have a decent number of dead cards comparative to the uh, the attack deck. Okie doke. Well, we're gonna take another four down to ten here, I assume, unless he has the ability to play on a uh, flash threat, which he very well could. We know he's playing uh, Nimble Obstructionist and Snapcaster at a minimum, possibly the Dillion Click, depending on uh, his uh, the price tag on his deck. Okay, 8 out of 10. And do we play another threat out here? Yep, an Avid Mind Sensor. So is this going to be countered, or is this going to resolve and then Wrath Effect next turn? If he's banking on a fetch land to do work for him, my guess would be this is going to get countered. Alright, Dissolve, Scrying. So allows him to kind of get a little deeper in the deck and see what he gets. Let's see if he tops or bottoms here. All right, one card on bottom, so he is looking for something. Which means he does not have a, a very steady grasp on this game at this point in time. Okay, a tapped land. Well, this is not what he wanted to see, I'm sure. So he's going down to six here. He's got two turns, so he basically he's going to probably counter most threats that get played here. And at four mana, that opens up to probably playing two two drops if he has two in hand. All well, the way he's developed his board up to this point, I doubt that he has two two drops in hand. If he has one, it's likely that he drew into it. It is turn five, he's missed one land drop, so he drew land this turn, is what I would expect. Alright, one two drop, which means he's dead next turn. So it looks like he's going to go for a counter on it. Like a complicate or something, just straight up counter spell. And does he have another one? I don't think he does. So I think he would have led on that before playing the Esmaru, which means he could have drawn it the turn prior to this, but he doesn't have two two drops, which is or one drop or two drops rather, which is is good for Jack because it gives him an additional turn of drawing. And right now the sticking point is going to be white mana. So does he have it? it looks like no. Um, if he has a Mystic Confluence, he could bounce it and step to buy an additional turn beyond this and draw a card deeper into the deck, and hope that his opponent plays all of his cards back out. Could you see a path to exile here or something? Okay, Supreme a will. So he's looking for mana here, looking for a plains land of some sort. And ideally one that does not do him too damage when it comes into play, so that takes out Hollowed Fountain. Because he will be going to two here, my guess would be. Or we can find like path to exile swords to plowshares. Okay. Well, what are we going to see happen here? I think Goldland's debating on whether he wants to play something out or not. I think if you have a creature in hand, you probably just hold it here. Alright, Pything Needle. Uh, possibly naming the Memorial a Genius, but I don't think that matters, or Archimorosca. So over a long enough time horizon, that could be relevant. 
Um, obviously a lot worse than Sorcerer's Spyglass, because you don't get to look at the hand and just make a determination. I don't think these lands are exceedingly relevant. Um, especially not at this point. I mean, maybe later on they become so, but... If I were to choose one, what would I choose? Probably Memorial the Genius. I think Arch of Arosca is just a long ways off. Um, Memorial the Genius is like... If he can stabilize this next turn, then it could be available to him on the turn following. But he's a two card, so I make the assumption he's probably sandbagging one creature to force his opponent to have to deal with it. Another card that would just lock this up is likely Moat. If he can Moat. Alright, Mystical Tutor and Determinus. Um, or he found the white mana and he's going for a Wrath now. Alright, so it makes sense why he countered. Alright, Sphinx's Revelation. Um, well, he can cast that if he has a land drop. So he's looking to buy another turn. I think here, if you have the Wrath, you just Wrath. I mean, that saves more life. All right, it looks like he has the Wrath. And now we're going to see the game turn. All right, Moat. Yep, so that was the other card we were saying. And if he still has Counter Magic available, and his opponent does not have Disenchant, then the game could definitely go his way. Um, the one Flash Flyer that I can think of off the top of my head that could be played has already been countered. Um, I'm trying to think of the other... There's another 3-2 Flash that you have to bounce a creature and it exiles a card from a graveyard. I think it's a Gargoyle. That card could be in the deck. I played it historically. Resto was uncastable there. Alright, so there's Ariel, a Responder. Um, I th it depends on what you have in hand. I mean, you could possibly let this happen just to play around um, any Disenchant effect on the Moat, because the Moat is very central to his plan right now. And if you could just make a land drop, they go to Sphinx's Revelation. I think the game likely ends... But it, it may come down to time as well. <laughs> yep, play fast, man. My assumption is he's just going to go for a Sphinx's Rev here on main main one, which is fine, I think. Be hilarious if he had Mana Tithe. <laughs> I doubt he does. Not a lot of folks play it. All right, F6, F6. <laughs> you do not want to run out of time here. <laughs> Griff's Boom would be another annoying card for him to have to see. Alright, Oblivion Ring, which means he's going down to a 1. So, that's a thing. That can't happen here. So now he has to Wrath, essentially. He's going to be at 5 cards in hand. Or he has to answer the Oblivion Ring, going to 1. Alright, Visions Beyond. It's just a cycle card there. And is it a concession? Okay. Well, he's evidently got something. All right, Snapcaster and Sphinx's Rev to stay alive. Okay, that'll draw him two cards. So that puts him back up to three, and he can block the Ismaru. I mean, it's the best play he's got. It's the best play he's got. Now, if his opponent has removal of any sort, he just wins the game on the spot. So he's kind of praying that his opponent does not. But on two cards, after not having played threats... I don't know how likely that is. You can put him to six on the next turn. And very desperately needing an answer to Oblivion Ring or the board state. Obviously the Kithian gets through, you block the Ismaru. Yep. Well, it's good for him that his opponent had obviously did not have removal. Now if he has like a planeswalker, the game probably just ends as well. Or Armageddon would lock it up, because just one hit is required. So, we shall see. Alright, threat. I think right now... Yeah, he's going to plus this thing up. I think right now the threat tends to doesn't matter, because a wrath effect needs to happen. Now, at a minimum, this is going to be a 3, so it could be pushed to 7 next turn, but I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to come down to volume of damage. I think it's just going to be contact in general. <coughs> so, do you have it? All right, portent uh, to find what? That's probably the best cantrip he has, but it's probably not going to help him at this point. Does he shuffle? Likely shuffles. Okay, didn't find what he needed. All 
Alright, he's going to draw here with his uh, memorial. I don't think this helps him. Um, he's already played a land for the turn. Uh, he realistically needs like like a straight up disenchant to get back in the game. All right, take their time. Well, too late for that. The game has has probably ended here. So, good game between uh, the uh, white base attack deck and the uh, blue white um, control deck. Um, looks like unfortunately control was unable to get here in this one. Because uh, this game's like yeah ninety percent over. So what do we have in there? What was he looking at? Um, he's looking at cards that don't really do much. That's one of the things with blue white. I think um, when you start looking at how you build it, um, I think like I feel like most of the builds I've got are probably around like seventy percent, sixty to seventy percent to beat white. We need pretty easily if you play well, maybe even higher. Um, but they're definitely meant for it, and they have a lot more dead cards so that, that would be bad in the control mirror, but um, tend to allow you to to. Um, do better in that matchup. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tournament. Uh, we ended up drawing with uh, player um, uh, Bandit Keith, and got to see some pretty cool games against um, Aggro versus Blue White Control. And then you got to see me, you know, finagle my way through uh, Grixis versus uh, the Blue White Control matchup, and then the White Weenie matchup as well with Grixis. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, take care now.